The convicted killer and subject of Netflix documentary Making a Murderer has just filed an appeal. Stephen Avery claims, among other things, that the actions of one juror violated his right to due process. Justice reporter Paula Reed has been following the case closely, and she joins us now from Washington. So, Paula, tell us, walk us through Avery's argument. What's he saying? Well, first of all, I'll say for anyone who's still working their way through the series, if you're still on episode seven or eight, there'll be lots of spoilers ahead. So you may not want to watch this segment. But in this appeal, Avery is asking to be let out of prison while the Wisconsin Court of Appeals considers his most recent challenge to his 2007 conviction. Now, background on the case, he was, of course, convicted of the murder of Teresa Hallback, but he had previously been wrongfully convicted of a sexual assault and spent 18 years in prison before he was let out. Now, while he was suing the police department, Department that wrongfully put him behind bars. Ms. Halbach was murdered. Her remains were found on his property. And his nephew, Brendan, admitted to police that he and his uncle raped and murdered Ms. Halbach. So they're both serving life sentences. In this appeal, which Stephen filed on his own behalf, he argues that a search warrant that executed on his property was invalid and that all the evidence that was collected pursuant to that warrant should be suppressed. Now, now that's key evidence in the case. That would include the blood that was found in her vehicle and the infamous did they or didn't they plant it key to her vehicle. He also argues that one individual on the jury pressured other jurors into convicting him. So he wants this court to declare a mistrial and then prosecutors would have to decide whether or not to retry him without that key evidence. Paula, what is the likelihood of success on this appeal? It's not very likely that this particular appeal will be successful. Stephen wrote it himself. We know from the documentary series, he has an IQ of about 70. He is not a trained attorney. This is not a well-reasoned, well-supported legal argument. But help is on the way for Mr. Avery. He now has another very high-profile criminal defense attorney who's going to help his case. He's also possibly teaming up with one of the Innocence Projects out in the Midwest. But as you know, in the original trial, he had very competent counsel. It would really take here something new, some new DNA evidence, some advance in technology, some new witness to really change what we currently know as the facts of this case. So then if this appeal is denied, does he have any other options? He's tried pretty much everything humanly possible over the past several years to get this conviction overturned. He's run out of all of his appeal options. Even the governor says that he won't pardon him. So again, it really appears that it would take something new to be uncovered. An advance in technology that would change you know, what we know about some of the DNA in this case, or a new witness, some sort of new facts that would change what the jury and all the judges who have reviewed this case currently agree are the facts of this case that led to his conviction. Paula, we all know this case has gotten worldwide attention. What is the overall reaction uh, from the legal community regarding Stephen Avery's situation? Well, it depends who you talk to. Of course, defense and many defense attorneys and many people think it's always good when you shine a, a bright light on the legal system and potential problems that, that could exist. But most people, especially prosecutors and law enforcement, believe that the documentary makers didn't really give fair time to the facts of the prosecution's case. And again, just because you sit through 10 episodes of a documentary doesn't mean that you sat through every moment or know everything that those jurors saw. So again, it's people who watch this documentary series, it's certainly interesting, it's riveting, there's lots of questions in this case, but you have not seen everything that the jury saw or that all of the judges who have reviewed these appeals have had to consider. Yeah, that's something that keeps bubbling up over and over again as people discuss this series, but it is incredibly popular. Paula Reed in Washington, thanks for your insight.